Hi, I'm Melinda Van Fleet, and welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm an author, speaker, and success coach who helps women believe in themselves, build confidence, and take action. In 2009, my husband Ryan and I were laid off at the same time, and we moved to the Florida Keys without jobs, not knowing anyone, hardly any money, and we never even been here, but we made it. And now, not every day is sunshine and rainbows, but we're living our best lives. All along in our journey, I've always said that someday when we get our shit together, we will help others. So each week, my intent is to be relatable and bring you tactical tips, tools, share my learnings and stories that can help inspire or transform you wherever you are in your career or general life and make an impact. I strongly believe that if I can do it, you can do it too. So what's stopping you? Hi everyone, welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. My name is Melinda Van Fleet and I am super excited that you chose to join us today. I have an amazing, incredible returning guest that I am super excited to talk to. And that is Deb Fru. And if you remember, if you've been following me and listening to the podcast, Deb was a guest on episode 104, where we talked about tarot cards. Deb is an intuitive tarot card reader. She's a business coach, and she is the founder of the Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe. And today, we're going to be talking about her event, which is coming back after a little hiatus last year in August. So welcome, Deb. Hi, how are you? I am awesome. How are you? I am great. Great. (laughs) Well, I am really excited because selfishly, I am coming to the event. (laughs) So so I thought it would be fun to have you on to hear about the speakers and for you to share because I know that these speakers are amazing. And even if you're not coming to the event, it'll be fun to learn about them and to connect with you. And you never know where that road may take you. So I'm going to kick it off to you. Well, thanks so much for giving me a chance to talk about this. It's not like I don't like to talk about it. (laughs) Um, I should probably start by telling you that uh, this is our eighth year. We actually did do an event last year, but it was a virtual event. Oh, it it was virtual. Okay. Yeah, it lasted two days. And uh, it was a completely different take on what I usually do, but I didn't want to lose the tribe. I didn't want people to think that, you know, I just disappeared. So, um, but actually this is our eighth year and our biggest, most amazing, unbelievable year. Um, Every year I challenge myself to be bigger, better, and more amazing. And this year I scared myself to death. So... (laughs) (laughs) So let me just tell you a little bit about how this all got started, because um, it's a really interesting story, at least to me. Um, When I got married 22 years ago, I moved out of a college town into a log cabin on a lake in the woods with my husband. I just love it here. It's beautiful. It's quiet. It's green. There's wildlife. It's just amazing. But there's hardly any people out here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was getting a little lonely not having my, my tribe of psychic friends because having been practicing uh, tarot professionally for 35 years, I've got a lot of friends in the business and different, you know, different types of psychics. They don't all read tarot, but that's for sure. And they all live in Chicago or in the Chicagoland area, which is a good hour and a half away, sometimes two hours away, depending on where you're going. And so whenever there was a reason to get together, I always would hop in my car and make the drive. And I thought, you know, I'm going to invite everybody out to my house. We're going to go to the restaurant and have something to eat. Then we'll come to my house. We'll have a big bonfire. Everybody bring desserts. We'll do readings for each other and we'll just hang out. That was the plan. And actually, it went off exactly as planned with a few extras because the Perseid meteor shower was going on. So we got to see that. And the people who came, I'd say probably three or four packed cars full of people came. 
And they drove a hundred miles each way. Oh my gosh. To come to my house, which I, you know, just don't know how I appreciate it. And at the end of the night, the full moon is rising. And as everybody's getting into their cars at 1130, I, they didn't want to leave. And I was like, stay, I don't care. <laughs> um, as they were leaving, they were saying, you're going to do this again next year, right? And I thought, oh, I never even thought of that. Okay, sure, I'll do it next year. So I went to the computer and looked up the Percy and Meteor Shower. I thought that's a good way to uh, set it up. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I... I planned the date for next year. I got everybody, you know, an, an invitation. I told them to bring their friends, and twice as many people came oh, the wow. second year. The third year, I knew something was going on. I had, um, I had hired a fire dancer, and he was a surprise, so everybody was absolutely bowled over, you know, when he came on. Um, and this is all happening in my backyard, by the way. I live on all this land, okay? And so I also had a storyteller. And this storyteller told a story about uh, a mortal man who married a fairy. And I had him standing telling the story in front of what I call the wild space. The wild space is... Um, According to legend, if you want fairies, you have to have a wild space in your yard where they can sort of just hang out and not, um, not follow the rules of your garden, like, you know, petunias over here and this has to be over there. It has to be a wild space where they can just recharge. So I had this monster wild space in my backyard. And I asked the storyteller, Fox, to stand with his back to that area and tell the story. And he did, and it was a great story. He was absolutely wonderful. And when he was finished, one of the members of the tribe, by the way, a member means you've shown up to one of my events. <laughs> uh, there's, there's no, you know, the, it's not a club. There's no dues or anything like that. No um, there's no meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's just our annual event. So one of the people who, who's a member of the tribe who had been coming since day one, she happens to be a walk-in soul. Now, I don't know if you know what that is, but about 40 years ago, I had read a book by Ruth Montgomery and it was about walk-in souls. And the story is that uh, here you are living your life and your soul has finished its karma, but it's got a perfectly good body and doesn't think that it's necessary for this body to die. And so what happens is, is it swaps out its soul for another soul that wants to come in and just clean up a few karma things and, you know, doesn't want to go through being, you know, a an, an toddler and a teenager and all that stuff, just wants to come back and clean up some stuff in their karma. And so what happens is, is usually the person gets really, really sick. And when they're on the brink of death, the original soul leaves and the new soul comes in. And I never knew what to thought, think about that story. It sounded kind of crazy. And then I met Linda Wilkes. Now, Linda Wilkes is actually giving a presentation this year, and she's telling her story of how she became a walking soul. So it's uh -huh. not to be missed. I, I was on the edge of my chair when I heard the story. So Linda stands up, and she says, the head of the fairies, his name is Pan, and if you know anything about fairies, you know that Pan is the head of the fairies, she said, Pan said that if we say his name three times, he'll appear. Oh. I, every time I tell this story, I get goosebumps. And oh. I, I looked at the group and I said, okay. Now, before I tell you what happened, I have to digress a minute and say that it was about, oh, 100 degrees out. And the humidity couldn't have been any worse it was as if we were just 
just uh, melting. Everybody really secretly just wanted to drive home and take a shower. Nobody really wanted to be there, but they were all so wonderful, and we have such a good time. They came anyway. So I look over into the wild space, and all of the brambles and the trees and the weeds and the plants and the thorny things, they all look like they're just going to drop dead. They're, they just look so wrung out because it was just so hot and miserable. So all of us are wilting, basically. And when we said Pan's name three times, I looked into the wild space and everything's standing there like it's going to wilt, uh -huh. except for this one bush that was shaking like a hurricane was going through. Oh, my God. And I looked at the group and I said, am I the only person seeing this? And I looked at the group and all of their mouths were hanging open. <laughs> wow. Then I knew this was something that I needed to pay attention to and that this group was meeting and we should continue to meet. I still mm -hmm. didn't know why. I still didn't know the reason, but that was the highlight of my life to that point. Nothing like that had ever happened to me. And so we finished up that night. We had a really great time. Lots of things to talk about after that. And the following year, we moved to a local uh, luxury bed and breakfast. And... This time I had lots of speakers and we had a full expo going on, you know, with readers and uh, vendors and so forth. And we did that for years four, five, and six. And every year it got bigger and better and more and more people. We were doubling the amount of people every time because the word was getting out. So... Then year seven comes, which is COVID year, and I learned how to do a, a virtual event. We got one of the top speakers on remote viewing to do a two-hour presentation for us. Uh, we had a panel discussion on some of the top psychics in the country. It was really fun. And uh, after that, then comes year number eight. Now, normally our we were always doing a big one day event when it became a virtual event. It was two days because I, I wanted everybody to have a really rich experience and you just can't make people sit in front of their computer for 10 hours. <laughs> so, <No. laughs> so I, we broke, we broke it up into two days, but this year it's a four day event. I have speakers coming in from Canada, um, Chicago, uh, I have Linda Wilkes coming in, who actually lives in Chicago. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're going to have two full days of back-to-back -back speakers, vendors, readers. Um, we'll also be having uh, two of the people that are coming, Marcel and Kim, their, their specialty is calling infos. They learned how to do this, and now they're the top two people in the country to work for Dr. Stephen Greer, and he is the number one guy. And they're going to come, and they're going to give a presentation and explain how it all works, mm -hmm. and then that night, we're going to go out and call in the craft. Wow. So it's going to be, yeah. And, and why are we doing this? We also have a, a speaker in the morning, Jeff Lorkey, who lives in Chicago. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's, he plays in a metal band and he has the most insane light phenomenon happening in his backyard in Logan Square in Chicago oh that, that, I asked him to come and do a presentation and show us. He has video, he has photographs, all in color, all amazing, all jaw-dropping, just jaw-dropping. Our headline speaker 
is Grant Cameron. And he'll be speaking on phenomena, high strangeness, and consciousness. Grant Cameron is was the number one guy in the world talking about UFO contact. And in 2010, I'm sorry, 2012, he had a download experience where it was basically explained to him that there were no little green men in tin cans flying around space, that it was all consciousness. It was our consciousness speaking to us in all different ways, not just that way, but also through mediumship and tarot cards and um, meditation and yoga and all the ways that you can make contact with the larger us. He, he realized it was all the same thing. And he is so compelling. When he first started going on the circuit and bringing this part of the uh, this consciousness part into his talks he was immediately you know like persona non grata nobody wanted to talk to him they all were like no no it's little guys in a in tin cans you know flying around the universe and shortly afterwards people started to see what he was saying and now he's back at the top again because he never stopped investigating it. And what I like about him as a researcher is he doesn't read all the papers and then write a book about all the things that people are doing and experiencing and so forth. He does it himself. He gets right in there and does it himself. He will show up to your physical mediumship where spirits come out of the cabinet, you know, fully formed He'll show up to your CE5, which is what we're going to do out in the field, um, and, and call in the craft. He has no fear to see where consciousness, how far it goes. And he is so compelling. And I can't believe he said yes when I asked him to come. So he's our, he's our headliner Saturday night. And then when he's finished then we're going to go call in the craft. So it's just going to be a weekend beyond anything we've ever done. And we have even more speakers. I haven't even talked about all of them. But uh, yeah, it's going to be quite an amazing, amazing weekend. Wow. Now, are there people that went to your first one or even your second one that are coming to this? Like eight years later. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Wow. Oh, yes. Part of my core group will be there. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, every year it's whoever can make it. And uh, yeah, I will have some of the originals there. Wow. And can you explain a little further? Because I feel like I know what you mean or what Grant means, I should say, too. But when you talk about consciousness, so all these things are conscious. So is it just that there's all these different fields going on and it's what we bring in ourselves, our higher selves? Is that, how would you explain? Well, uh, I, I don't want to take any fire away from Grant's talk because okay. he's, <laughs> he's amazing. But I, do, but I will say this, every, he put he posted something on Facebook the other day, which I really loved. He said, anytime you think something is anomalous, you just haven't reached that level of consciousness. And anomalous meaning it doesn't exist? No, anomalous meaning you don't understand it. You don't understand it. That's a big word for me, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> So if you if if <laughs> so let's say let's say somebody drags you to a physical mediumship um, circle, and an actual okay this has actually happened to people that I know all right so um, what if you're sitting around a table at a physical mediumship event that's very private and closed and it's actually in a completely dark room. 
and a fully formed human hand that's animated comes onto the table and starts tapping its way along the table and a voice some, from somewhere in the room invites you to touch it to feel if it feels like a human hand. Now, that's anomalous. Unless you do it all the time, unless you've experienced physical mediumship and then you know what's going on. You understand that what's happening is we are speaking to ourselves from another level and waking ourselves up. So I feel like that's kind of where I'm at, like what I was thinking. I just don't have the right words to put it together. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oftentimes people say that um, uh, aliens, entities, and UFOs are actually our future selves coming back to wake us up. Right. Right. Yeah. So just in another field, everything's going on in a way. And when you say Mm -hmm. physical mediumship, so... Can you explain that a little bit? Because I feel sure, like there's a be there too, but I just want to. Well, you might have been to a medium where a medium will sit down with you and they'll talk to your dead relatives and yes. they'll give you messages and that sort of thing. Yes. Physical mediumship is completely different. Um, the The medium will generally sit in what they call a cabinet. It could just be um, uh curtains hung up in a in a cube so you know or a, a square so that his his or her self is inside of this sort of box made out of curtains or could be made out of wood depending on where you are they're usually tied to their chairs oh their feet and their hands are tied to prove that they're not doing any of this while you're you know thinking, you know, that it's just to prove that they're not doing anything. They're not right. making things appear. And so what will happen is during the seance, sometimes flowers will drop from the sky. These are called apports or manifestations. Um, anything that just suddenly appears is a manifestation. An apport is something that moves from here to there and you don't know how it got there. Um, you might have an entity made out of ectoplasm, come into the room and speak to you directly. It it depends on the level of the physical medium. Not every physical medium is at this level, trust me. And it's not like a circus. It's not like you can just buy a ticket and go. Um, They generally have a, a group that has been meeting for 10 years at the same time, the same place every every week. So they build up this, this community that grows through the process. Interestingly, at the end, when it's all over and they turn on the lights, sometimes the medium who is, again, tied to their chair and in a, in a little cordoned off area, their clothes will be on inside out. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, it's amazing what can happen. Right. And, and why is this happening? It's not happening so that we can go, Oh, what's the next cool, crazy thing that right. I can find on this planet. It's to wake us up and say, wait a minute, if this person can do it, it's not about figuring out how they did it. It's about how can I go there? Mm-hmm. Okay. I haven't reached that edge of my consciousness yet. Right. Right. Have you um, been to, I assume? Um, to a physical medium? Yeah. No. Actually, we were setting one up. A, a physical medium from Germany was coming to the States just before COVID. He does come to the East Coast uh, every year. And we were luring him to Chicago, but then COVID happened and everything broke down. So, Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. And I do believe that. And I have a question too with this too. So let's say everyone in the room, does everyone see the same thing? Or do yes. they see different things? Okay. 
Um, not everyone sees everything. So, for example, yeah, somebody might true. see, yeah, so generally speaking, if things appear, then everybody gets to take something home, you know, that, that appeared. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes someone will see light source or, you know, movement that other people don't see. Right, right. Because I would think that would be a big piece of it, too, because that's the whole point. Like, we're all right. different at different levels of consciousness and exactly accepting, understanding, developing, however you want to bucket it. So, interesting. Wow. Thanks for sharing all that. That's an extra little bonus. That- <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you about two other people who are going to be yeah. speaking because they're really interesting. Um, I had... Uh, for a while, just made this event for practicing professional metaphysicians. So in other words, you're in business. And it's not the easiest business to make money in. And so if you want to uh, support yourself as a metaphysician, you're going to need some help. And so I always have our top business coach come, Jean Kuhn. Whenever she can make it, she comes and Boy, she is, first of all, heart-centered, and she has a free group you can join. And I know she'll talk about it um, on Friday, because when you come to this, you learn so much. When COVID started, she started this free group, okay? We met every single day. And I thought... Well, I'm probably, my business is probably going to go under, you know, because what am I going to do? Nobody knew what was going to happen with COVID. Nobody knew what was ahead. And Jean said, that's, that's not going to happen. We're all going to be in business when this is over. And myself and several of the other people in the group all had their best year. Oh, yeah, I believe that. I mean, so she I is you last year. I mean, and yeah. I booked a tarot card reading and I referred you and you were referred to me. So yeah, totally. Yeah, she is. She's quite amazing. And she breaks it down into steps you can use like the minute you get home. So she's well worth the time. And then we also have Tara McCollum, who's going to give a talk on her business, which is called The World Muse. Mm. I have... I know a lot of healers and I know a lot of people like psychologists and psychiatrists and none of them can get to the place Tara can get. I'm actually her client. I asked her to speak because of the amazing, incredible ground shaking results she's brought me just by showing me who I really am and what I really want Mm. and what, what I came here to be. And it's, it's so cleansing and it's so joyful. And she really has a new technique. I've never seen it before. And so she's going to give a talk about it. And she's also going to do many sessions for anybody who wants them. So Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And I I definitely want to make sure I've connected with all of these speakers. So how many total? Is it five or six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Yeah. Wow. That's my lucky number, Deb. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> See, that's why you're coming. So we're also, of course... We're, Thursday, we start out, of course, Thursday is, you know, check-in day. So wherever you're going to be staying, um, there will be a check-in. And then we meet for dinner. And then we go to the venue and we watch a movie. So we're having dinner and a movie on Thursday. Oh. And then after dinner and a movie, and the movie, by the way, is to set the stage for the rest of the weekend. And are, can you share what the movie is or is it a secret? It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so after dinner and a movie, then we'll all come back to the venue and hang out, get to know each other, you know, just 
uh, network, whatever it is we want to do. There's a big fireplace there and it'll just be lovely. Friday night after all of our talks, we'll do dinner again and then we'll come back and uh, we'll have vendors and readers, social time, networking, hangout time, and I'll have a little music, a little trios coming. Huh. And Saturday uh, is our blockbuster day. And in fact, if, if uh, Illinois lifts all of our restrictions before this day, I will sell tickets just to Saturday. But right now, it's all up in the air, so mm-hmm. don't, don't hang your hat on that. Um, but at any rate, that'll be a jam-packed day of speakers and then going out and calling in the craft. Wow. And then Sunday... If you happen to be staying at the inn like you will be or one of the Airbnbs that I've rented out, um, you're invited back to the venue for a goodbye breakfast. But they can't they can't hold everybody because of covid restrictions right now. We can't say everybody can come. Hmm. Um, A lot of people, too, are staying at local B&Bs, so they're going to get breakfast anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But at any rate. um, so if again, if re- if restrictions are lifted, you know, I will definitely see if we can accommodate everyone. So yeah, no, and that's great for anyone listening. If you are someone that would be interested in just Saturday, if the restrictions do get lifted, like Deb was just saying, you know, definitely connect with Deb so you can be on her email list and stay in the loop on that because that would be an amazing bonus of. Um, COVID going bye-bye, if that's possible. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, every, you can find everything on my website. My website is internalwilderness.com. And there is a drop-down menu of the Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe. Mm-hmm. If you fill out the little form that gets you in the loop, and you'll only get emails about this pretty much. I mean, occasionally I'll send out something. But generally speaking, this is for the group and for our annual me- annual meeting, our annual fun time. And, um, and then it explains all the other things that are going on so you can, you know, partake as you like. Oh, yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I have a question, too, that made me think of it. Since you said last year was virtual, do you have it recorded where you sell the recordings if someone was interested especially with the... I do have it recorded. However, I am constrained from selling it. Our headline speaker asked that I don't sell it. Gotcha. And so in order to get her to be our speaker, and she's such a powerhouse, I couldn't say no. You know, I do have a recording of it, of course, for my archives, but I can't sell it to anyone. Hmm. But it is... It's mind blowing. We are, uh, we will have um, all of Saturday recorded. And um, of course, we'll have a, an event photographer the whole time, too. So, oh, and everybody, please feel free. You know, everybody takes pictures and posts them all weekend long. Please do that. You know, I just love it when I flip on Facebook and there's everybody doing something that they were just doing five minutes ago. I love yeah, it. <laughs> I know. Isn't that the one of the amazing, you know, there's always positives and negatives to everything, but one of the amazing pieces of social media, besides obviously me getting to meet you <laughs> for virtually first <laughs> is that, yeah, you can be like, Oh, look at it. That's awesome. And kind of feel like you're part of it and learning and moving and grooving with everybody. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's totally fun to just, you know, be in the moment. And just so everyone knows, you can always reach me at deb at internalwilderness.com. And on Facebook, if you go to Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe, I have a a public page there. You can join. And if you do join the page, then that means it'll show up in your feed. And then all the announcements go on that page. I also, of course, email them out. When we get closer, I may even do podcasts about it. It just depends. Um, Usually when we're doing over 100 people, I'll, you know, I'll have a podcast. This year, um, if we're still under COVID restrictions, we can only have 50 people. So I'm assuming we'll be getting 
the word out to 50 people. But if it gets, you know, to be double that, then I usually do a podcast too. So, because people consume information differently. But yeah, go to Facebook and go to Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe. Just join the page so it'll show up in your feed and you'll be in the loop. That's awesome. Well, I am (laughs) so excited. It's just worked out perfectly for me. (laughs) 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 Like I get to meet you. I get to come. I'm like really happy. I'm excited about the speakers. And I'm just excited to learn about all the things I have no clue about, but I have an innate belief. So I'm like, yep, bring it on. Let's look at for those UFOs. (laughs) So... (laughs) Why not? Yeah. Why not? You know, on our on our third year, we when we were sitting out in the field across the street from my house, we were out there to watch the Perseid meteor shower. And it just happened to be a night when there was like nothing happening except there was a UFO. <laughs> it was way, 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 way up there. And we thought we were watching a satellite because it was just cruising along in a straight line, very far away, just like, you know, a satellite looks like a point of light. Mm -hmm. And it was just moving. And then all of a sudden it went left, right, left, right. And we all looked at each other and went, oh, my God. All right. Well, thank you. I will put everything in the show notes and definitely reach out to Deb. Or if you have questions, you can ask me about anything, if something just kind of resonated, but you're a little unsure. Cause like I said, I'm going, so I would love to meet anyone in the audience that decides to go to the event too. That would be super fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited. It'll be here before you know it. Yeah. I can't wait. Yay. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone loves it. Thank you, Melinda.